Hey, hey, hey. Welcome everybody to Miss Glow's Kitchen where the sugar, spice, and everything nice where we slice, dice, and entice using everything we can from peppers to allspice. What's up my people? Y'all know what time it is? See y'all in the kitchen. The real deal, old school southern style cornbread dressing is on our menu today. First things first, so we're going to build our stock for this dressing because that's what we need. You can use a chicken broth or a chicken stock, but even though I do that too, I do build one with chicken. So I'm going to use chicken thighs here. But the other thing is have your pan of cornbread ready. And if you're making a lot of dressing, then a couple pans of cornbread, okay? All right, so back to this. I am using chicken thighs. So if you want to use um, chicken legs or another part of the um, chicken, you can. But I usually use bone-in chicken thighs because the bone-in gives you more flavor. And then the chicken thighs, you can just pick the meat off and put it in your dressing. All right. Before we go any further, hit that thumbs up, that like button, hit that share, that subscribe button, and hit that bell for notifications. All right. So on to seasoning our chicken thighs. I want to tell you what we need for the dressing momentarily we're just going to get this seasoned up first so i'm going to use some black pepper if you want to use some white pepper or um uh, some other kind of pepper you can but i always use black pepper okay so here i'm going to use seasoned salt in the thighs okay but you can use a white salt so if you don't feel comfortable with that um flavor then you can use white salt it'll work all right i got better than bouillon some chicken bouillon so we're really trying to build a um a chicken stock here all right but use that bouillon just use a little bit of it like right on the tip of the teaspoon all right and that's going to be enough to do it for us okay so that's going to give us another depth of flavor so it's going to bump it up a little bit if you will all right so here's our trio onions bell pepper celery i have one large onion diced in there. I have two, um, two um, stalks of celery that I, um, I chopped up. And then I have one medium green pepper. So they're all chopped up. So you can do these as big or as small as you like. So I'm not going to, I did not chop them on camera because I just didn't think it was necessary. You can kind of see the size right there of it. All right. But we don't want to do it too fine because you don't want it to disappear. You do want some of it to show up um, in your cornbread dressing. Okay, so that's it for this. We're going to let this boil and then we'll come back. All right, so now we'll jump into actually preparing the dressing. So what's going to happen is we're going to get this cornbread into the bowl. So I'm going to cut a couple pieces out to keep because I'm only making a small pan of dressing, but then I'm going to put it in the bowl and we're going to chop it up. Now what's going to happen here is I am going to list the ingredients and the directions in the description box down below. But I'm also going to put the ingredients up as I am using them so that you can actually um, see what I'm using uh, before you go and look into uh, the description box. So let's get started with chopping this cornbread up. Now you want to get the cornbread as fine as you can. But so if you want to use a food processor, you can. I do not. It's cornbread. It will crumble for you. And if you have a couple big chunks left, you can always um, cut them up with a knife. Chop it a little bit more. So it just all depends. But it's a fairly easy dish. You will find out it is so good. It is a staple, especially for Thanksgiving. But it's not hard at all. All right. All right, just for color, I'm going to scrape my little, my little crumbs up off the bottom of the pan. All right, so let's chop. I have a meat um, chopper here. I've got these claws on today, but normally I get my hands in here and crumble the cornbread up really well. But since I have these longer nails on today, I'm going to use a meat chopper, which I got for like a dollar out of a family dollar. So... <laughs> This little gadget, this little thing has come in handy the last couple times I cooked for different things. So, I, it was a good one dollar investment, how about that? <laughs> Alright, so 
get in there and like I said, if you have chunks like this, you can always take a knife and you can just cut it right up like that. So it's so easy. All right, and if you're not used to cutting the way I just did, grab a chopping board. You know, grab a cutting board and then chop it up on there. Child, please. All right, that's what I'm saying. I usually would get into it with my fingers, but baby, this is working out just fine though. So, all right, so we want to get this crumbled up and then we'll move on to the next step. So you do want to remove your chicken thighs from this. You do want to. And um, pour your stock and some of the veggies in here. So you definitely And you don't have to pour all of the stock at once. So you're gonna pour, and then you're gonna stir. Okay, so you're gonna pour, stir, that's how you're gonna do it. So you're gonna make sure you get all of your cornbread moistened with that stock. And so, if you don't have enough stock, that's where the chicken broth or chicken stock comes in handy. And you can also use a veggie stock or a broth. So that'll work as well. All right, and if you're making a seafood dressing, then obviously you can use a seafood or a shrimp stock or something like that, okay? All right, so. Cream of chicken. Any brand, any kind, but cream of chicken. Do put it in here, my mama always did. All right, so you can see already that the dressing is already taking on a um, like the like the consistency of a really thick oatmeal. So, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Don't make your dressing too soupy. So, don't go and pour all of that stock in at once. All right, and so it's okay if you um, get enough stock if you go back in that pot and take out the rest of your veggies and put them into your dressing. So that is perfectly okay because you want to have enough of the uh, the onions, the bell peppers, and the celery in there. All right? All right, so butter. That is almost a stick of butter. Almost. Oh, it is so darn close to it. All right, so get that stirred in there. Right, poultry seasoning. All right, so look, that's about two to three tablespoons. And what's going to happen with this, this poultry seasoning and this sage, <laughs> is we're going to have to watch it because a lot of sage is going to go in here. Okay, I couldn't get that quite loose, so I put some, but I'm going to put some more sage as the star in here. So the, the cornbread and the sage, they're like most important ingredients in here. All right. So two to three tablespoons of poultry seasoning right here and two to three tablespoons of sage. So I'm gonna stir it up and then what happens is like, yes, I'm gonna make this the absolute country way. I'm gonna make it exactly like my mother did. So what happens is I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna taste it, and then I'm gonna put some more. That's how it works. That's how it works with dressing until you get it perfect. So there's no perfect recipe for it. Not if you're cooking it southern style. Okay, breadcrumbs. All right, so about a half a cup, three quarters of a cup of breadcrumbs. If you want to toast two slices of bread really, really crispy, then you can do that. Really, really crispy and then chop it up with a knife. So if you don't have breadcrumbs and you have bread, make your own breadcrumbs. Just don't make them too big or you're going to wind up with a uh, like a stuffing consistency. And that's not what we're looking for with cornbread dressing. We want the cornmeal, the cornbread part of it to be the star, not bread. So if you want a bread consistency, that is a stuffing. All right, so keep stirring and just make sure you stir it really well. Okay, the important part, tasting spoons. Make sure you taste as you go. You know how dressing is supposed to taste. So you know when it's right. 
And you know when it's not. So if you had it from mama, grandma, auntie, anybody you had it from, then you know. So you're gonna, at this point after you taste it, you will adjust your seasonings. And more than likely at this point, you don't need salt. So you will be adjusting the poultry seasoning and the sage. So we're looking for a really sagey cornbread dressing. Now sage is a, is a um, that's one of those spices that'll take over your dish. It'll take it over if you're not careful. But with dressing, we're looking for it to take over the dish. So just so you can understand the sort of flavor profile we're looking for. We're looking for that sage to stand out. Because if it's not enough sage, then it's not a good southern style cornbread dressing. Alright, just a little bit. I got some sea salt here, some flakes. So I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit and that is about hmm, half a teaspoon. So I'm going to go with half a teaspoon with that. Okay, so every time you put something in to stir it up, stir it up, stir it up really, really well. You want to make sure that you have your herbs and spices, your seasonings evenly distributed in here. So you want to, because once you put it in the pan, there's no more stirring. So you just want to make sure while it's in the bowl that that's what you're doing. All right. So again, you'll be tasting, you'll be tasting, and you'll be adjusting your seasonings. So have yourself um, tasting spoons there, plastic, whatever. And so you want to make sure you do that every step of the way. So this is one of those easy southern recipes, but you've got to taste along the way. Because you've got to make sure. Alright, so since I'm making a small pan of dressing, I'm going to use one beaten egg. But if you are making a large pan of dressing, you want to use at least two eggs. Now, this will be the binder. So this is going to help along with those breadcrumbs. It's going to hold it together. It's going to help it hold its shape. So you have your dressing running all over your plate because that's not what we want. Alright, we want a stiffer, a stiffer cornbread dressing. Alright, so stir that egg in there. And if your dressing is still hot, then have someone help you. So you stir while they, they pour so that the egg does not cook. All right? We don't need scrambled eggs in the dressing. Now, there are some instances where people put boiled eggs, oysters, uh, gizzards. So there are variations to southern dressing that people still do to today. Because, yes, because I learned from my mother. So there are things that, that I'll do. Absolutely. She has put gizzards in before and it was really good. She chopped them up really fine though. It was really good though. So, you don't want to put chicken because it's Thanksgiving and you know you got turkey, you're serving turkey then. You can either chop some turkey up in there, you can chop some gizzards in there. So, the boiled eggs, that's not one of my favorites. But if you want to try that, by all means, I'm not going to tell you not to. Because that's just a preference of mine. Alright, so in goes some more veggies. I want to make sure I can actually see them. You know, we eat with our eyes first. So here we go again. More sage. So in total, you're going to see here, it's going to take 9 to 10 tablespoons of sage. So it's really old school. And so you can see when you're mixing this too, you can see where the dressing takes on an even totally different color. Alright, totally, totally different color. Alright, so I'll be right back. I'm going to taste it. We're good to go. I'll be right back. I'm going to spray some non-stick spray into a small roasting pan. Yes, I'm going straight old school. My mother used to make our dressing in a roasting pan. So and then put the turkey down in it too. So I'm going to use a small roasting pan. But if you want to use butter or margarine to grease your pan, that is perfectly fine. I have taken the, uh, I am taking, I'm sorry, I am taking the chicken off the bone. So I don't want to use the skin. I don't want to use the bone. I just want the actual meat out of here. And so that's why I use thigh meat because it's juicy. It's dark meat. It's really juicy. But if you prefer to use white meat, you can. It's going to work. Trust me, any kind of chicken. It is chicken dressing. All right. 
Okay, so here, we're just going to take it off the bone, and then we're just going to spread it all over the bottom of the pan. Now, I am putting my chicken on the bottom. If you want to put your chicken all through your dressing, then right here, take your chicken off, um, cut it or tear it to the size that you want, and mix it into your dressing. I just actually want a layer of meat on the bottom. So then once you dig it out, you get the dressing, but then you get that meat on the, the bottom of it, okay? All right, so I'm going to take this off and then come right back. All right, so the oven behind me is on 350. So I've got as much chicken as I want to put in the bottom of that. I don't want a lot of it. So if you want to put a whole layer more chicken, by all means, do that. It's so good anyway. That's good. But that's I just wanted a little bit. Because I got cranberry sauce and I have some other meat on the side of this, okay? So, all right, I'm going to get our dressing into the pan. So, remember, don't forget to grease your pan. You don't want your dressing to stick, but you also want a nice crispy crust on the outside of it. All right, so you want your whole dressing to be, but you want that uh, a crust on the outside of it. It's so good, cranberry sauce, I'm telling you. All right, so I'm going to straighten out the top. And this, so, this is going into a 350-degree oven. All right, so my dressing is actually browned on the top. So I'm going to take it out, and I'm going to let you see what it looks like. So I want to make sure I take it out on camera. All right, there we go. There's my roast pan. If your dressing does not brown on the top, take the top off and let it brown in the oven. Mine has browned perfectly. Check that out, y'all. <laughs> so good. Look at that. All right, let me show you a close-up. All right, so I put the camera directly on it. That is a close-up of our dressing. Y'all better go make this. It is so good. Thanks for watching. See y'all next time. For more great recipes, tips, and ideas, check out some of my other videos.